Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? Welcome back to Jamaica Plain. So, working on a little robot shop called General Trader today. So I wanted to do something a little bit different with the shape of this one, so we're going for something vaguely triangular, which is kind of a nightmare to do in Fallout, but it is what it is, I'm quite happy with the result. So I played around for a little while, used a couple of pieces from the concrete tab, specifically these ones. Which gives a bit of a point, but it uh, doesn't leave a lot of space on the inside there, so... A couple of half boards on the side. Nudge these over a little bit. And we have a little bit of space. So it's going to be uh, rather compact in here, but... It looks quite cool, I like it, so... Mix and match with the uh, metal front there, the metal doorway. And uh, obviously this standard size wall is not going to fit on the long edge of the triangle there, so... We'll uh, work on that in a moment. We'll snap some basic walls in for now. Some windows on there for a bit of daylight. And a roof. Which turned out to have certain technical problems that we'll uh, get to in a moment. But it's, it's all good. So. First issue, trying to figure out how to put a roof on the corners. And the uh, long and short of the solution is I used a floor. So we'll snap the flat one on there, because I don't need so much room at the front. And we'll use this angled concrete wall, it's designed to go on the long edge there, just to get a guide in. And we'll grab a floor piece again, and there we go, we have a perfectly fitting roof. And repeat over this side. And there we have it. Nice and easy. Now, I don't want to use concrete for the rest of the build here, so I'm going to uh, sort of uh, group select a few things together to complete the walls here. We'll get this angled one in first. Need a little bit of clipping at the bottom there just to make sure it's connected properly at the top as well. And there we go. See, it looks good. Whip around the other side and repeat. And don't do what I did and group select the whole building and wonder where it disappeared off to. I had it behind me at the time, so I'm looking around, every time I turned around it just stayed behind me. Which was uh, something of a Charlie Chaplin moment, I think, but it was good. <laughs> so, we'll uh, grab this half wall and plug the remaining gap, which I didn't think was going to fit, actually. It turns out it works just fine. Oddly enough, the place you'd expect it to fit best is where it didn't, strangely, but there we go. It's a fallout, doesn't make a right lot of sense sometimes. Here we go. This is where you would think it would fit just fine, but it's actually a little too small, so we'll come back in a moment and uh, plug up the gaps a little bit. Just get that lined up. As it turned out on this one, it didn't actually need to group select at all, so... We'll uh, manually adjust it. There we go, much neater. Sorted. Now we've got two more to do. This one was a little bit easier using the ashtray. Again, just place them both on a flat surface and group select from the ashtray. It means it's nice and level with the floor. And there we are. Not perfect, but never was going to be, so we'll come back and uh, tidy up in a moment. There we go. So we're on to Toys Out of the Prams mod again. It's... I should have said before, by the way, is um, if you have a look on the mods list, it's he's down under the uh, acronym, I suppose, that he uses. It's um, something like OTP, t uh, something like that. It's a whole load of T's and P's and O's. You'll see it. As so you'll recognise it as soon as you see it on the mods list. Anyway, link down in the description as usual. For now, just can group select a couple of these uh, vertical plywood pieces added by as pillars and supports mod. Get those to plug the gap, and we'll move the whole structure back and into place. Still keeping my uh, screens up there. Not quite ready to show you the biker bar just yet. Won't be long now, though. Now, lift that up. Just nudge it forward a little bit. Get everything lined up at the back wall here. Obviously, it sticks out the far end a little bit, but there's plenty of room to get round on both sides, which is the main priority. Once the controller stops jumping around up it, we'll get that in place. We're a tiny little bit low here, so I came back and lifted that up, but you'll see why in a moment. Otherwise, pretty happy with the position of that. Let's get a little uh, balcony out front. 
Apparently, for some reason, I'm obsessed with little balconies. <laughs> it does make for a, a smoother entrance anyway, so... There we go. Nice and tidy. A little bit of a step up there that causes slight pathing issues, but there's so little room inside it was going to be a nightmare to begin with anyway, so... Not going to worry too much about that. Wouldn't like to see a sentry bot try and get out of here, but... They tend to teleport where you need them anyway once you've assigned them to a job, so that's the main thing. So I'm just going to go around the corner a little bit here. There we go. And again on the other side. A lot easier to get the heights right when you've got the plywood on in the first place. There we go. Now we just need to adjust. Sorted. You see we've got a bit of clipping through the kerb there, so that's where I'll uh, lift it up in a moment. However, we need a sort of step up, and rather than do the usual just snap a step onto the front of it, I thought we'd do something a bit different, so back to Toys Out of the Prams mod again. I'm going to use some of these angled planks. Uh, very forgiving with the collision, so we'll just push them up against each other. Don't mind too much that they're not perfectly level. Keep that scrappy look a little bit, and just group select into place. See they'll stick up a little bit more once we lift the thing into place. Well, that's fine, we've got plenty of room on that. Unfortunately there's a limit to how many I could get to position right next to each other for some strange reason, so let's uh, do it in two halves job here. There we go. Drop those together. And we have a ramp. I'm not quite sure, as I say, how the pathing will work on that. Probably not at all, to be honest, but... As I say, it's going to be uh, enough of a nightmare as it is. It's uh, an aesthetic build, not a functional... Well, it's sort of functional, but... You know. <laughs> so a little bit of support here. Unfortunately, getting it to sit at the right height without any clipping on the cinder blocks is... Not impossible without it looking ridiculous in some other way, so a little bit of clipping through the ground, but we'll just have to assume they cut them down to size or something. As always with this, I'm looking for things like the corners and places like that, contact points for um, positioning those cinder blocks in to support the floor, rather than placing them all the way around, so I've applied that principle in a few places around the building. For this one I wanted something a bit longer to provide support with, so we're using a horizontal uh, picket fence post there. And we'll jump inside, and here we encounter our first major problem. The roof's not high enough. I can actually get this to go in, as you can see, but we have some clipping going on there. So we'll pull that back out, and we'll have to raise the roof a bit. Yeah, that won't do. <laughs> so, off with the roof. Front can stay as it is, that's not too much of a problem. I'm going to use these little half shack walls. And just group select into place. For some weird reason, this one wanted to snap halfway along the wall, the window wall there. And just sort of stick out into midair. And I have absolutely no idea why. Best guess, I suppose, is that uh, it's something to do with where it was originally taken from. But it is what it is. Not very helpful. <laughs> well, nothing we can't solve with a bit of group select, so... Get a couple of these in, and we're going to follow this principle all the way around this top piece here. And then head on round to the back of the building, and the sides as well. So, using the tall pillar here for that little bit of extra reach. Kind of stretching it to its limit, really. And we'll get that lined up. It's actually turned out to be much easier than I thought it was going to be. Though it would probably be easier still if you move the building out away from the wall and then put the, these boards in and then move it back again. Just because uh, when I came around the back, I ended up losing one of these pillars inside that house there, just you can see sort of behind here. I was able to group state it in fine, but I just couldn't get the pillar back out again, so... Such is life, as I say. There we go. Jobs are good. So, unfortunately, for some reason, these particular roofs won't 
positioned straight on the floor. The wooden chuck ones will, but this metal one won't. So snap it to a wall, pull the wall out of the way, and grab it from mid-air like this. I'm going to make sure I've got as much clearance on the side there as I can. Quick look round in a moment. Pop back a bit. There we go. See from the side there, we've got a good bit of room to work with, so we shouldn't have collision issues with the wall. There we go, move it in. Dead easy to line up. If you get it in the right position, this one, then you can just snap the other two uh, roof pieces straight to it. So Nice and easy to fix the uh, problem we were having. A little bit time consuming to put those sideboards on, but... It works, and that's the main thing. But I'm not going to say it just works. <laughs> Unfortunately, it didn't just work there, so we've got a couple of gaps to still need plugging up. Uh, another half wall. This one uh, fills the gap quite nicely and tidies things up. I was quite pleased with how well this worked. There we go. And another one up here, because I forgot, apparently. Also very forgiving. And there we go. We now have enough clearance. As you can see, though, we're not going to have very much room in here, so... As I keep saying. We'll uh, push this over to the side, make sure we've got just enough space to get around it. Not quite as far over as I'd like here, so we're going to grab this massive rug and glitch it into place. I did try and use the ordinary small ones, but I guess the contact point's in the middle of the floor there, so it wasn't doing the job. Could have used a chain, but if you do, obviously it lifts the thing up a little higher, which I didn't want. So, one long one does the trick quite nicely. Just tidy up a little bit. There we go. Plenty of room. So, this is problem number two. <laughs> Came to put this... Uh, level 3 training stand in. Turns out at the time I didn't have uh, either of the cap collector perks you need to have to get it so I had to run off and grab a couple of levels for a few hours. That slowed me down a little bit. But in the meantime I did a couple of railroad quests and grabbed Ballistic Weave for this character as well which is very handy. She's considerably tankier now. Well, we now have our trading post so I'm going to use that as a basis for the internal wall here and just sort of build off of it. So we'll rug glitch that half wall in, and around the other side, I did try to use the same principle, but the wall's a little too big. It doesn't leave enough room to move around, so... Adapting to our situation, you go back to Toys Out of the Prums mod again, grab these vertical planks, and again, very forgiving, we'll overlap them so they're just about the right size. There we go. They're actually a little bit too tall, but uh, given the position of them, you can't see them clipping through the ceiling at all, so that's fine. Make sure you've got them pushed far enough over on that rug, because uh, you can see a little bit of a gap there that was uh, not acceptable. So, there we go, tweaked it and bob on. So, get this internal wall in position. Draw this is the staff only area. Now we've got just enough room to move around in here, which is great. And one more gap to fill up. So, another one of those vertical planks. These two rugs here it required a bit of adjustment to get things in, as the rugs kept hitting walls and so on. Strange collision boxes on some of these walls. But uh, a little bit of adjustment that goes in neat and tidy. And there we have it. Sticking up in the air a little bit with the two rugs, so we'll just pull those out. And we have our building. So a little bit of decoration done there. These... The two destroyed robots are f and the uh, totem there are from the Rust Devils tab in USO, see from uh, Automatron. And the three robots are sat on guard rugs up on the roof there and on the front porch. Yeah, looking neat and tidy. Let's take a look around the inside. I'd hate to see what happened if any raiders sort of wander out this direction. Those robots will probably go bananas. And probably be an absolute nightmare to get back on the rugs afterwards. But I've got no settlement tax on, so that's the main thing. Well, we have our little uh, sales hatch there. I think I'll do a bit of junk decoration at some point between now and the fall tour. Well, plenty of decoration in here. 
compact, but uh, a nice little workshop. Most of these, well, all of these shelves, in fact, are from Aslam's uh, workshop decoration pack, which he's recently updated. So if you haven't uh, updated the mod, you should definitely go and do so, because there's a couple of new shelves and bits and pieces in there that are very cool. These two here at the back, prime examples. This is a bit more of a mix and match with our decoration style. A few more pieces from the uh, Rust Devils tab with the broken robots on the floor at the back there. And there we go, just enough room to move around it. You see what I mean by the pathing being an issue there. I do wish we could um, conveniently hang stuff on those hooks on the side, but uh, it's a bit of a problem doing that on PlayStation. I believe it can be done, but uh, I have absolutely no doubt that that's going to be a total nightmare to try and do, so... I gave that one a pass, I think. <laughs> and we'll swing around and make our way back outside. Alright. So I do hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much for watching. If you did like the video, you know what to do by now. As always, if you'd like to support the channel a little more directly, please do consider becoming a sponsor over on YouTube Gaming. You'll find all the details down in the description. For now, Thank you very much. I'll be speaking to you all very, very soon.